Welcome back everyone. In today's video, we're going to discuss how to build foundations for sheds, small cabins, and tiny houses. Now the most important part of building a shed or a cabin is the foundation. Obviously you want the perfect square level foundation to work off of to build the rest of the structure. And more importantly, building the foundation that works the best for the type of land that you're building on. About just over a year ago, I built a shed. I did a video on the full build. I've linked to it in the description below if you haven't already seen it. It got over 1.5 million views. As you can imagine, I got a lot of questions and comments on that video. A lot of the comments were around the foundation for the shed and the floor. If you've shopped around for a shed kit at a retailer, they will sometimes include the roof panels, but they won't include the floor. I'm gonna talk about the choices I made on my shed, and that will answer some of the questions and comments that I received on the build video for the shed. So the first thing to consider is what is under the ground on your property. And for my property, it was fairly easy. The entire housing development that I live in was built on top of shale and solid rock. To be more specific, it goes kind of like this. There's about six inches of clay followed by about a foot to a foot and a half of shale and then followed by solid rock. That makes it really simple for me to build just about anything, but it also makes it a nightmare to try and dig. To dig down to a decent level at all, I would have had to probably hire a bobcat or I would have had to rent some kind of a backhoe to dig out a lot of that shale and loose rock. I also didn't want to mess with the flow of drainage on my property. From the middle of my yard to the side of my yard where the shed is, there is a gradual pitch and that allows water to run off reliably. So that is really the main reason why I chose a floating foundation using deck blocks as opposed to pouring a slab. It's the brand name that I use, they could be called something else in different countries. But essentially it's a preformed concrete block that will allow a two inch piece of lumber to fit into it in either directions. So you could use two by fours, two by sixes, whatever you like, and it has a four by four square inset in the middle so that if you're using four by four posts, you can mount them right into the deck block. I've used these before on other sheds. I found them really convenient and they make for a very quick and easy foundation. I've never had any issues with them. Now it's been over a year and you can see the sheds held up really well. The roof is held up fantastic. I'm, I'm really pleased with that. I reinforced all the structural lumber and as it turned out, this winter was a really good test for this shed. We had the worst windstorm that we've had in 40 years here on the island and I thought, well, if the roof is going to blow off, it's definitely going to do it now. The roof didn't budge one bit. There was nothing wrong with it. Everything stayed in place. Everything was solid, intact. The other reason for having the shed a little further off the ground, we got a lot of snow this winter and that was another reason why I was glad that the shed was built the way it was. Now the other option, if you've got a decent flat spot in your yard, or if you don't mind leveling off an area in your yard, you can pour a slab. There are cement truck services that can bring in the concrete, or you can buy the bags and pour your own concrete into a wheelbarrow or a cement mixer and mix it yourself. If you've selected a spot that's closer to your property line where the water is going to run off anyway, that is probably the most ideal spot for the shed. I would keep it away from areas in your yard where the water is going to pool next to the concrete slab or around the concrete slab. You want to avoid that at all costs. The other option if you've got a nice flat spot in your yard is you can dig down a few inches and get a nice gravel pad started and then on top of that lay some masonry blocks down and build your floor structure on top of that. Some people complain that I use OSB flooring, which is the acronym for oriented strand board. And it's not called chipboard. A lot of people call it chipboard. I don't know what chipboard is, but this is oriented strand board. It is used in the construction industry widely, has been used for the last 15 to 20 years. If you don't believe me, you can go check out any construction site in your local area. 
I can guarantee you they're using OSB. OSB has come a long way. It comes in four different grades. The construction grade for flooring is usually type three or type four, which means that it's very water resistant. And it has to be in a lot of cases because in Canada, you'll see houses being built in the snow, in the rain, and there's going to be a lot of moisture on top of the OSB as the house is being built. Go check out the Crazy Framer. That's a YouTube channel. I link to it in the description below. You can watch him. A lot of his videos are about building a house by yourself in the winter time. So that concludes this video on shed foundations. I hope you got something out of this. I've built quite a few sheds in my time. The things you want to consider are what's under the ground and the best way to find out sometimes is just to dig. The second thing to consider is drainage and where water is going to run off your property. There are some municipalities that don't let you build a lot of decks or structures on your property because it interferes with water runoff. So you want to check those regulations. You want to check, of course, any of the building code regulations to see what it is you're allowed to build without having to get a permit. Third is the style of the foundation and whether or not you're going to build a deck onto your shed like I did because it essentially is an extension of the framing for the foundation and the floor that you're going to build. You might notice that this channel is sponsor free. That means you don't have to see commercial plugs in any of my videos. Yes, I run ads before the video, but that's just the regular ads that you see on YouTube. I do not have sponsored products running through my videos. I don't do product plugs in the middle of my videos. That is something I wanna continue not doing. And in order to do that, I need your help. To donate to this channel, head over to my donation page over here. That will keep this channel sponsor free and that will help me continue to make and edit these videos. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. There are a couple more videos on this side you can watch. Until next time, thanks for watching and have a great day.